go represent Rufus, uh, Rufus at the funeral. You know, shit like that. Dude, can you talk about DJ Train for a second? He was, uh, amongst other things, he was one of the, uh, he was the DJ for JJ Fad. Yeah. And uh, he died, unfortunately, tragically in a fire, correct? Yep. He died in a fire. Yeah. Right talk now. to me about DJ Train, your relationship with him, and some of his accomplishments. Well, we, we wasn't that tight, but he was around He was around a lot. Uh, again, you had to understand, a lot of these guys are a lot younger than me. And uh, he came with, with the second wave of J.J. Fab. J.J. Fab was over at, uh, with us over at uh, West Coast Record Distributors. And then Rudy sold him to Rufus. And that's what Train came to, for, to my knowledge. I didn't know Train before then. And um, he was from Compton. So uh, we had crossed paths a few times. And I knew who he was. But we, you know, we wasn't really that tight. But um, it's one thing about being from, from Compton. Don't, you ain't got to be tight with somebody to be from Compton. Still have a... A relationship with him, you know, and uh, allegedly his family, him, he burnt up in a house. Uh, Chris, uh, I think it was Christmas, a uh, Christmas uh, tree caught on fire or something, and the cops couldn't get the doors open in time to save him. And um, it, it, he, he, it, he expired in that situation. And it was very tragic, man, super, very tragic for the whole community, dude, not only just for him, for, for the music community. But the city of Compton as well, because he was well respected and well liked. And uh, you know, I think, and here's something that uh other people don't understand. People like say, like Easy, he would love to have been able to be at Train's funeral, but he knew he couldn't go because you're too big. And it's not because you're too big, too good or too big, it'd be a hassle for everybody else to have him there. And that's why a lot of times you don't see people in, situa in, in certain situations because their, their stature is put them in a situation where there'll be a security risk for, for them and anybody else around them, okay? Um, so that was, that was one of the things I would do. I would come, this was before a um, bunch of emails and, and you know, and uh, cash app and shit. So Jerry or Kate, I was come get this money and take it over the train family and, you know, put this on this funeral or whatever. And here goes something for you. And I gave him every fucking dime. So it is what it is, Doc. You know, just was a different time. Mm -mm -mm. R.I.P. Uh, here, a little nerd question for you. And I say that respectfully because I'm, I'm a nerd myself. Audio, hip hop, all that. But uh, G Maverick says, hi, Mr. Williams. Quick question. I'm an audio engineer, and I was curious as to what type of analog recording equipment you favored during your studio equipment or during your, during your studio sessions. Thank you for your time. When it came to um, my home studio, because I only had tracking studios, um, I was always taught to do your rehearsal at your at, at home. So when I built, I bought my first studio was only a four track, a Tascam four track. I've always been partial to ta Tascam equipment. Um, after we did the four track, we did all our traffic jam for K Day on the four track. And then uh, McCola hired us to do uh, to do a mix um, a mix record for Bacola. Dre was hired to do the mix. And I think he paid me like five or six grand. I went and bought an MG1212. That was one of the first digital boards by Akai. They had a mixer built into it. And the tapes looked like, um, the tapes looked like, uh, like beta, beta max tapes, okay? And they, but they wouldn't, beta max tapes would not fit in the machine though. You had to have a special, fucking tape to put in this machine. Uh, shortly after that, I bought ADATs. I went and bought um, four, I had three ADATs, 24 track studio uh, with a mixer board, the whole nine yards. And after that, after that uh, for, 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 uh, phenomena or scenario, I uh, broke down and bought a 16 track uh, analog machine. That was probably one of my favorites because everything about it was standard. You know, I used regular half-inch tape. It had a great um, task care machine. It was a great machine. I had to clean the head from time to time. I, it came with a mixer board, patch bay, everything. And the guy sold it to me for like five grand. And uh, that was probably, I got more recordings on that than anything else because the uh, ADATs got tires. They played out. They couldn't keep them synced together for nothing in the world. And the MG1212 was a great machine, but only had 12 tracks. And you use one of them for Sempty. So, um, you know, and the state, 
it when it went to the machine when it when it went to the studio, you couldn't do nothing. I mean, if it went to the repair shop, you couldn't do nothing. And only one guy fixed it up in uh up in uh Pomona, in Pasadena, uh Dave Sigamoto. He's the only person that fixed these damn things. And you know, just like nah. So when I had a chance to get rid of it, I sold it. So yeah, that was those are those are my favorite machines. And uh I think yeah, the 16 track, my Taz Cam 16 track was my favorite. Although unknown at one time it rendered my studio and brought a 24 track task cam over here, and that was the shit. That was, I'd use a one inch tape, and that was the shit. Oh, I know all the uh, all the audio nerds are loving this conversation right now. Now I personally have like 25 more minutes, but I'm gonna leave it up to you, Lonzo. We okay. have 200 and something people in the building, so I feel it's gonna be hard to leave 200 and some people. But I'll leave it up to you, man. You tell me what's up, and and we can keep pushing, or we can knock it out. Let's do uh let's do another 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 uh what twenty more minutes? Uh, okay, cool, cool. What what time is cool. it? Cool. Uh, it's it's uh, seven twenty right now. Seven thirty. We'll wrap it up. Okay, cool. Seven thirty. That'll work. I can let my yeah. Perfect. That'll work. All right, cool, cool. And once again, shout out to the uh, the chat room. Please hit that like button. That really helps our algorithm. 